Kobe backgrounds today, celebrating Kobe's birthday, August 23rd, and Mama Day, August 24th. And yes, we are live now, but uh, we're going to be airing the uh, podcast episode real soon. Just going to smoke here a little bit here. How's everyone doing today? We're actually going to be live here on the Twitch that's going to be uploaded to YouTube a little later at the Sky Lounge. Make sure you check that shit out if you can, when you can. Really, that's it. Uh, my God, what a what a real uh, sexy music we got going on here, right? And yeah, I mean, it, it, just in case you didn't think I was going any more LA, yeah, I should wear my fucking Dodgers uh, Dodgers jersey, but. No, it's been it's been weird. It's been weird to try to um, you know put up shit on Twitch consistently because I'm a lazy piece of shit. Uh, admittedly, I'm a lazy piece of shit. So unless the podcast, I don't really bring myself to do Twitch not too often, which is which is unfortunate. But yeah, I'm just gonna smoke this shit up. We're gonna start the podcast in about two three minutes. Yeah, just give me about two three minutes. But Jesus fucking Christ, Vegas, it's still kind of pretty hot. All right, we're still uh, late August, yet somehow it feels like fucking July. So that that's always fun. All right, what the fuck kind of, okay, so music, you, you need to change the shit up. I, I, I can't, this is, this is too fucking, too relaxing. I can't have too relaxing. I need, I need a little bit more hype. All right, relaxing, sure, this, this is nice. I, I, I can do this. I can do this! But yeah, we're gonna try to just, uh... Generally, now that I do the streaming, while I'm also doing the podcast, means most times I just have to do this shit in one take. And oftentimes I fuck up when I just do audio, but when I do the stream, it kind of helps me focus on um, reading proper, you know, just making sure everything is on point, getting shit done. So that's really bad. And hopefully, uh, oh, fuck if it's entertaining. I wrote this shit. Like, fuck you. <laughs> Why are you so defensive? Yeah, I don't know, man. Maybe it was the way I was raised. I don't know. Does that mean you're just being a piece of shit? Cause you were raised like that? No idea. Let's turn off the laptop though. Turn the goddamn laptop here. All right. Fuck. God fucking damn it. All things fall apart. Just like life. Woo! All right, that's enough of that shit. All right, boys and girls, why don't we fucking begin? Music off. Audio about to be on. Turned on. Like when I watched some good old Madison Ivy. Shout out to Madison Ivy. Uh, her dog passed away. Shout out. You know, rest in peace, little doggy. You know, sometimes people treat fucking dogs like property, but god damn it, man, some, for some people it's family. And uh, if you just see it as property, fuck you. Uh, but shout out to Mass and Ivy. I know uh, people, you know, who lose shit. It sucks, man. Losing, losing shit sucks. And, uh, but, you know, part, part of growth in life is, uh, is losing and departure. And we gotta, we gotta grow from that shit, right? Boys and girls, are you ready, kids? I'm, I'm, I'm kind of not ready. I'm kind of, meh, meh, not super ready. Ooh, here we go. Hello, okay, there we go. Microphone, penis looking microphone is almost set. Here we go. And, bo -bo -bo -bo. Are you motherfuckers ready? To see me falter on reading and why SATs were never my fucking strong suit. Here we fucking go. Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge Podcast, episode number seven, 96, fuck, 
See, I already missed that shit up. Episode number 96. And as always, thank you so much for joining me today and listening in. If you are new, welcome and check out some of the other episodes on the page. All episodes are available on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Music. So make sure you are subscribed so you can get notified for a new episode every Tuesday. Make sure to follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook at The Sky Lounge, uh, all one word. Stock me on Snapchat at DA13IG5UNG. Let's get started. Okay, the topic of the week. This week, the pendulum pinnacle amongst peers. Greatness. Ooh, fucking alliteration. Good for you, son. You know what alliteration is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah fuck me, right? Pretty good at that shit. All right, so five points for Gryffindor for alliteration. Awesome. And the, the question we ask ourselves this week is, is it better to be shit on a great team? Or is it better to be great on a shit team? Now... Our man here, Kobe Bryant, who deserves his jersey to be hung like this today, in all days, really. You know, there were, there were moments, there were a lot of times in his, throughout his career where Kobe Bryant was great on a shit team. This was pretty evident after Shaq left. Uh, this was before, this was after Shaq left and pre Pau Gasol. And you could definitely see that. Greatness does get recognized, absolutely. Amongst your peers, greatness does get recognized, and people will flat out say, this guy's a hard worker, this guy is toughing it out despite everything, but at the end of it, will people see that truly as greatness? Will, will people recognize that? And for me, the simple answer is this. Casual fans, no. Casual fans won't see that as greatness. So when you ask casual fans, hey, what do you think about Charles Barkley? What do you think about Reggie Miller? What do you think about... Uh, you know, guys like, uh, you know, my God, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking spacing out on his name, but uh, brother from fucking New York Knicks went to Georgetown. Holy shit, I... Patrick Ewing! Fuck! All right, yeah, Jesus fucking Christ. So brain, brain fart there. But really, guys like that who have no NBA championship under their belt, they are amazing and great players, recognized Hall of Famers. But to the casuals, they'll always point back to the fact of... Have they won a ring, though? And that always comes back to the point of when you ask this question of, is it better to be on a shit team? Or is it better to be shit on a great team or great on a shit team? The question always comes to, for the casual fans, it's always, has, have they achieved palpable success? Meaning, you know, have they reached first place in sports, a ring, right? In, in case of work, uh, promotion, Raises in, in, in points of relationship, uh, marriage, longevity, children, right? And we're going to tackle those three aspects that I think are very interesting to take a look at. And I mean, you can take a look at movies, but I seriously think three aspects of life for sports, work, and relationships. We can definitely dissect these aspects or this question, really. So, again, when we're asking the question about sports, right, is it better to be shit on a great team or great on a shit team? And when you take a look at sports, I like looking at the NBA because it's a sport that I grew up with. It's a sport that I understand very well, uh, relatively speaking, to the other sports that I uh, currently watch very adamantly. But when you're great on a shit team, what generally happens is you have to take the lead. You have to be the person who takes charge. You have to be that guy or gal who transcends that normality and really have to be that leader more ways than one. And oftentimes, your peers won't recognize. Some, some of your casual peers won't recognize that. You know, when, when, you, when you ask casual NBA fans, right, you know, what do you, right, what do you think of Charles Barkley, all these uh, no-ring guys, they'll be like, wow, you know, they're fucking losers. A lot of the young kids, they have these wrong, this wrong mentality of if you don't win a ring, you ain't a thing. Which is crazy to me. Which is absolutely fucking crazy. Because, listen, even without a ring, if you look at the context of what these guys did, and this goes to any sport, really, in football, um, you know, soccer, or football, uh, hockey, any of these major sports, you know, you, you will see that there are great players who didn't win because of either context of the team, owner, or just the league. And at the end of the day, you know, amongst the peers, 
amongst your peers, you are absolutely recognized, I, I feel. Especially in sports. I mean, that's why the Hall of Fame recognizes great players. I mean, if you look, take a look at the Buffalo Bills, you know, their run from 1990 to 1993 when they went to four Super Bowls in a row. Four Super Bowls. Despite the fact that they lost all four, they went to four straight Super Bowls. That in itself is an amazing achievement. But to the casual fans, they will always say they are perennial chokers, perennial losers. They will never amount to anything but to the hardcore fans, to the peers of the, you know, that context of that work environment, that group. They recognize, they absolutely recognize the greatness of these, these achievements. And the puppies are going crazy. So for the re recording and the video, hooray, puppies are going crazy. This is my life. And, you know, the thing about sports is when you are great, you know, you are recognized. If you're great on a great team, you're only glorified to, I mean, near deification, right? Near deification. And because of that, you know, oftentimes people will try to compete the lines between these two different contexts of who's better, the guy who was great on a great team versus the guy who was great on a shit team, then you have to just start explaining the context of these two individuals. And even then, even then, you know what happens? Off, uh, most times, most times, people won't recognize the greatness because they're fucking idiots. They won't educate themselves. It's not rocket science, people, but if you just try to take a look at the background of what's going on, then maybe you get a better understanding. But what happens is we just try not to learn. A lot of people just like to live in the ignorance and think ignorance is bliss. To that I say that's fucking wrong. Ignorance isn't bliss. Holy shit, I don't know how many fucking times I gotta emphasize this to you boys and girls. Ignorance is not bliss. Do not live in ignorance. Educate yourselves, learn more shit. That's what you gotta do. You do not live in the fucking dark. And to sports fans, I implore you, if you love a sport, research it. Dive into it because you're going to be one of those fucking dumbass casual fans that says, you know, Jim Kelly is the worst quarterback. And no, Jim Kelly is a Hall of Famer quarterback who led his fucking Bills team to four straight Super Bowls. Oh, no, Reggie Miller is one of the greatest sharp Reggie Miller is one of the greatest fucking sharpshooters of the NBA in NBA history. And he is one of the greatest leaders the Indiana Pacers has ever seen in their life, in their, in their franchise lifetime. I'm serious. I mean, there, like, there's so many fucking things we could say about individual players on shit teams who are fucking great. And we just have to recognize that they are great. And let's talk about the work aspect, too, guys. We have to talk about the work aspect. Because I can tell you for a fact that I have been both a shit person on a great team and I have been a great person on a shit team. And when I worked at the hotels, it was pretty much just, I knew what I was doing. I was very confident in what I was doing. I rarely made mistakes. And through that confidence, um, I kind of get ar I kind of got arrogant. You know, like our man here, number eight and number 24, you know, same, same guy, you know? And I, 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 I hold Kobe's um, Mamba mentality philosophy to near religious levels. So for me, when, I, when I'm in a work environment, I'm one of those guys that says, toughen up because I'm not, I'm not going to help. I'm, I'm only going to help you for so long. Reality sucks. And if you don't get accustomed to it, you're going to get your ass chewed and you're going to fucking die. That's the way I approach work. That's the way I approach most things um, that I kind of get into a rhythm of or a groove of. And a lot of times people don't like that. People don't like when you are very aggressive in that regard, especially when you're on a shit team, especially when you're in a work environment that's very extremely toxic, um, no growth, no mobility, and uh, stringency is a sh it's, it's just written all over the walls. And when that specific work environment is mired in ignorance, you're, all, you're not gonna grow, and you are all, you're not gonna get recognized. And it's unfortunate because in the work environment, your peers, and this, I've said this, and I I've was able to experience this firsthand. Your peers will recognize you as a great piece to the team. But to the casuals who are basically management, you know, the customers, they won't recognize it. 
your peers will absolutely recognize what you do. Because they're around you every fucking day. As they should be recognizing. Otherwise, I'd be a bit curious if they didn't recognize anything, right? So, oftentimes what happens is your peers will recognize the validity of what you're doing. Or, the, or, or you know, if, if rightfully so, your incompetence. And again, I, I've been there. I've been in that shoe at the, at the job right after I was working at the, after the hotel. So we're going to a tech company. And honestly, day to day, I felt that I just didn't know what I was doing most of the times. And that, tra that translated through, that translated through very well um, to, to me to recognize that, okay, I'm, I, I, I got to step up. I got to step up my game. I got I to gotta do better. And once you're able to kind of recognize that shit, you know, you got to just uh, keep working at it. And again, your peers do, what, whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, your peers do judge you. Your peers do grade you. And your performance and your, your valuation in context of what you're doing is always based on the judgment of your peer. I know, I know we say no judgment, all this shit, but the reality is judgment is everywhere. Live with that shit, embrace it, and God, just do your best. But, you know, work environment, my whole, again, my whole mentality at work was I'm not showing off. I'm just here to do my job. I'm just here to do my job. And oftentimes, you know, in sports too, you see great players. I'm just here to do my job. Even on a shit team, I'm here to do my job. They're putting up 40 points in basketball, like 40 points, seven rebounds, eight assists, all this shit. I'm just here to do my job. Even though they're on a losing cost, I'm here to do my job. I'm here to here to win. And that was the mentality I wanted to bring into work every day. Um, I treated work like, you know, uh, game seven, fourth quarter, two minutes left. Or, you know, in case of uh, hockey, you know, second overtime, game seven, you know, last goal wins. And whoever goes, goes. And that was the mentality I really carried forth to work every fucking day. Every fucking day. And, you know, it wasn't recognized, and I was pretty much a target um, the last six months of work. And reality is, your peers will recognize it, but casuals don't care. They don't care. For the casuals, it's the bottom dollar. Um, in the work context, it's how much do you cost? How much trouble are you actually causing us? Uh, what's the bottom dollar to get you cut um, if you're not profiting, if we're not profiting off of you? That's the reality of work, boys and girls. If you go to any big companies... Carry that mentality with you. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a real heartbreak when you fucking, you know, get let go or quit or get fired or whatever have you. Whatever happens in the context of work, you really should carry that mentality. And finally, let's talk about the relationship aspect. So, is it better to be shit on a great team or is it better to be great on a shit team in a relationship? Now, this is tricky. This is tricky. If you think about it. Really think about the context of the question. Really think about this, right? Is it better to be that person who provides everything, who gives them, who gives that person, you know, their that significant other, your everything, and be the good guy or the good woman, you know? Is it better to be that or just a receiver of one-way relationship? And for relationship, again, based on your peers, right? So your, your fucking significant other will recognize what you're doing. Whether they're oblivious to what you're doing in specific acts or not, they'll fucking know what you're doing. And I say there's no great, there is no answer for this, for the relationship aspect for me. For me, there is no, there is no right answer. Because whether you're shit on a great, whether you're a shitty person in a great relationship or a great person in a shitty relationship, it doesn't matter. You are in a relationship. You brought yourself to that shit. At the end of the day, if you're in a relationship, you have to realize you are a willing participant of the relationship, and you, as a person, have the free will and choice to leave said relationship if you don't fucking like it. Jesus. Fucking Christ. How hard is that? How hard is that concept, man? I mean, I swear to God, every time, every time I've explained this, like, 
You're not forced into a relationship. If you feel like this is shit, leave. If you feel like this shitty person, leave. I'm just fucking nodding right now. There is nothing else to say about relationships. It's, it's, it's that simple. It doesn't matter. The reality of relationships is it's a relationship. It's between two individuals, you know, minimum two individuals, right? Minimum two individuals. And as a willing participant, you do have a choice. You do have a choice to say no and just fucking leave. Fuck. So we talk about the sports, you know, the work environment, the relationship environment, and we get to a certain point in with each of them. But the reality is, it's just it's based on context. Your peers will obviously recognize what you're doing, but it's always context. It's always context and recognize where you are, right? And so ultimately, ultimately, let, let's start this up. Ultimately, adapt and understand context of where you're at and shit will be easier. Bring yourself to reality. Dumb that shit down. That's how shit, that's how you figure shit out, man. Dumb shit down and figure it out from there. All right, boys and girls, let's move on to some sauce. Because I like serious topics and everything, but also love talking about sports. As evident with the, the fucking jerseys and the mostly sports talk on the topic of the week. But Arsenal. Arsenal FC. Arsenal announced this week, starting from the 2019-2020 season, Adidas will be the official kit manufacturers in a five-year 300 million pound deal. That's roughly 60 million pound uh, per year, uh, worth 60 mil per year, which is pretty astounding thinking about that. And my thoughts on this were, if you actually look at the history of Arsenal Football Club, we're actually coming back to Adidas since 1994 uh, for Arsenal. They won the league in 1989 in Anfield wearing Adidas. Boom. Maybe shit will be different. Who the fuck knows? And fuck yes. Uh, I love me some Adidas. I think I seriously think Adidas is my favorite brand um, in terms of clothing. And it will un uh, undoubtedly for me, I think it will definitely increase the value uh, of the club. And ho hopefully in the long run, it could mean we could buy more players. We could bring in star-studded players, write pieces, and maybe win the fucking Premier League. Who the fuck knows? Because let's talk about the Premier League, boys and girls. In week number three, versus West Ham United at home, a 3-1 win. Whoa! Arsenal won a match? Yes. Yes, we did. All right, so... Oh, dear merciful Zlatan. We actually got three points. Hooray. Hooray. And let's talk about the goals. Arnautovic opens the goal scoring at the 25th minute. <laughs> Just Listen, West Ham players getting goals. It, it's When you see Arsenal players play defense by committee, it's fucking hilarious and awful when it goes all wrong. And this was one of those prime examples of that shit going all fucking wrong. And then at least, in, you know, five minutes later, Nacho Monreal, right place at the right time, at the 30th minute, across from Hector Bellerin, and that's uh, Monreal and Nacho, you know, Nacho Monreal. His first goal of the season, uh, actually had a couple of good opportunities throughout the match for Nacho, but he was only able to get the one goal. So, and, you know, the great thing about when you put Lacazette and Aubameyang in, on the pitch together is they provide this immense offensive pressure on the back line, and they will make mistakes. And this is what happens in the 70th minute, where Diop gets an own goal. You know, and this was an awkward own goal because the pressuring from Aubameyang and Lacazette was immense, and this should not be understated. Uh, absolutely fantastic work by, by those two boys. And overall, decent performance with Welbeck also getting subbed, off in the 70, subbed on in the 75th minute and getting his goal of the season in the 90th minute, second minute of extra time. Oh my, that is kind of ridiculous, but hooray! Hooray! We get, we get three points. We're ninth in the league right now. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. Not too shit. Not too great. We're Okay, we're all right. We're not we're not doing terrible right now, and we're able to see former Arsenal players such as uh, Jack Wilshere, Lucas Fabianski, 
and also Lucas Perez, who, my God, we forget he was an Arsenal player. But it's great to see guys like this. And there was a stat thrown on Instagram earlier um, comparing Guendouzi statistics, Guendouzi statistics with uh, Wilshire statistics. And they were pretty much implying that Guendouzi is the better player. I agree. I agree in the short term. But let's not forget, let's not forget what Jack means to our club. What Jack means to Arsenal is the representation of um, boyhood love of boyhood dream, of childhood ambitions, and passion, right? Jack had passion, and for I, any Arsenal fan to knock Jack for that shit, get the fuck out of here. So, I like seeing stats like that, but at the same time, implying shit like, you know, Wilshire was the worst off player because he's not that is he's not as good enough, that's a ridiculous statement. That's a fucking ridiculous statement. And... You know, still in the top 10. Still in the top 10 for now. Uh, but despite all the injuries. Oh, look at that. Arsenal has a lot of injuries in the middle of August. What a fucking surprise. Let's read off some injuries, shall we? Siad Kolasinac, less left knee injury with a timetable return of around October. Maitland now, small fracture and small uh, in left fibula. November return. Jenkinson. Wow, he's still here. Significant strain to right ankle. November. Koscielny, oh, captain, my captain. Right Achilles tendon repair, November. Please come back. I mean, Mustafi, just... Oh, Koscielny, please come back. Please, for the love of God, come back. And next week, uh, Premier League, week number four, we have Cardiff City at Cardiff City. September 2nd, uh, this is actually Aaron Ramsey's old club from Wales. So I'm very excited to watch what kind of environment this is going to provide. Um, another away environment. And I'm actually going to be at the pub this Sunday. Uh, probably not going to live stream there, but I'll probably do some shit. Uh, post up some fucking clips and videos or something uh, from the pub. And it's going to be great times, man. 5 a.m. drinking, you know. I'm, mostly, I'm going to be smoking, but uh, it's going to be fucking fun to do. And when we talk about football, I, you know, I got to talk about Arsene Wenger. Why are you talking about Arsene Wenger? Listen, he's a part of the club's legacy, all right? I'm not going to just fucking ignore the guy and what he's doing. Stalker mode engaged. Anyways, Arsene Wenger is awarded highest honor from, president, uh, from the president of Liberia and former player under Arsene Wenger of Monaco, George Weah. And here's the thing about George Weah. He's also a Ballon d'Or and FIFA Player of the Year in 1995. Yes, ever since he was brought into Europe by Arsene Wenger in 1989. So, holy shit, I mean, I, I, mean, I wasn't even a thought at that point, so 1989 it is. But... It's crazy to see, you know, how players um, can translate in the future, right? Like, you can be a player one day, but you could be a fucking politician with immense powers and give the highest honor in the country to a football manager the other day. Ooh, that's crazy. But you know who sits on top of the Premier League right now? Liverpool. Tottenham. Chelsea. And what? All with three wins, zero losses, and zero ties. What the fuck is happening? Fuck is happening! And when we talk about what the fuck is happening, we have to talk about Jose Mourinho, right? Oh boy, oh boy, Jose. What the fuck is going on with Jose Mourinho right now? On the third year of Jose, a meltdown came to me. Seriously, he, he's like one of your friends who always gets into a shit relationship. And always crashes out. It's fucking hilarious to watch. And I am enjoying every moment of it as an Arsenal fan. I do not like Mourinho. Glad he's falling apart. Sorry, United fans. I do not really care. Uh, Jose Mourinho is a cunt. Let's be honest. He's a real cunt. And the dynamics of how much of a cunt he is really reflects on what's happening with Manchester United. So let's take a look at the Manchester United squad. See what's going on. They just got their asses handed. They just got their fucking Ass is handed at home. 3-0 against Tottenham. 3-0 against Tottenham. Harry Kane scores in August and Lucas Moura scores twice at Old Trafford. Holy shit. One win, zero draws, and two losses. 
This is the worst start to Manchester United since 1992. That's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. And a lot of Manchester United fans, I know, are quick to jump the gun and ask themselves, is Zidane the right answer? I honestly don't know what to tell you. I honestly don't know. I know that a lot of uh, rumors right now is the fact that Zidane might be uh, considering or United is in talks of Zidane, whatever the fucking rumor is. I don't know. I don't really care. If a club can entice Zidane, however, it can really be only United, in my opinion. Um, but imagine if that happens, if, if Zidane brings the prestige of winning three in a row Champions League. I, I mean, three Champions League in a row, that, that is just... Ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, Manchester United handle the situation, how they deal with Jose Mourinho. Definitely interesting. Definitely have to keep our eyes on that shit. So let's take a look out in football future. But when we talk about football, we have to talk about our Seahawks. And, oh God. Preseason week number three. When is it over? Like, when is preseason over? At Minnesota, 20-21 to 21 loss. I mean, I'm not even sad about it. And it was funny because on YouTube, uh, we uploaded the clip of the match reaction or post-match reaction. And I got a comment there saying, I sound very resigned. It's, it's preseason. I don't, I don't get excited about preseason, man. And the prospect of what's going to be happening with the Seahawks, it doesn't look that great in my opinion, so I kind of hold that, and it's an opinion, I kind of hold that opinion, and uh, we'll, we'll have to see, if I get proven wrong, I'll be very happy, if I'm proven wrong, I'll be more than happy, but 20 to 21 loss, cool, 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 cool. there's great, there's other things going on in the NFL though, there are other things going on in the NFL, uh, Odell Beckham Jr., Odell Beckham Jr. has signed a five-year, $95 million contract with a guaranteed $65 million coming his way, <sighs> making OBJ the highest paid wide receiver in NFL history. Oh boy. Oh my God. Thoughts? Um, I'll give, I'll give one thought. I'll just give one thought and just leave this here. You better hope he can produce for you and he just not become a fucking cancer. I mean, we've seen his behavior. I mean, Odell Beckham, absolutely one of the most talented receivers we've seen um, in the NFL, right? But this is a huge fucking contract. You will never be able to offload this to anybody, should you ever find the reason to offload this contract. Oh my god, that is a huge fucking contract, but, you know, that's what you get for being one of the top receivers in the league, but you're also a petulant child, so good Good luck with that shit. Oof. All right, guys, let's talk about the Lakers uh, before we get any more flack. Uh, the Lakers had an interesting week because Kobe Bryant's birthday was August 23rd, and August 24th was Mamba Day. And here's the thing. I don't know if you know this. I'm a huge Lakers fan, and I'm a huge Kobe Bryant fan. And, um, you know, anything that's involved with Kobe, just I'll, I'll nerd the fuck out. I'll nerd the fuck out. And I actually did a video on the YouTube channel about Kobe and Kobe fans and their reaction. It was pretty fun to do. Um, I'm going to be filming more of those skits and blips, I call them. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. I might actually post some on this shit on, on Twitch. Um, so be on the lookout for that shit. And let's talk about the NBA because the NBA had some interesting and very sad news for us today. In the last few days, actually, Manu Ginobili of the San Antonio Spurs has announced his retirement after 16 seasons in the NBA. Um, absolute stud. Uh, Manu Ginobili is an absolute stud uh, and an underrated clutch shooter. Uh, Manu got nothing but respect from me, and I'm sure a lot of other NBA fans. He's retiring as a four-time champion. Jesus fucking Christ. I did not realize that he was a four-time NBA champion, but... You know, all the battles he had with Kobe, the Lakers, and just seeing uh, the Spurs just dominate at least 15 good solid, 20 good solid years, really, 20 good solid fucking years, you know, since David Robinson and all that. You know, it's crazy to see Manu Ginobili um, retire. It's going to be the passing of 
the fucking Spurs, man. It's going to be a new Spurs generation, and I'm very curious to see what we're going to see, uh, what we're going to be seeing um, in the Western Conference here. And, oh, that, that's a bummer, though, man. Manu, Manu is such a fucking beast. And here's the thing. I could definitely make the case for Manu, uh, you know, possibly being in the Hall of Fame. One of the greatest international players um, of his generation. And one of the best clutch performance um, player. Bar none. Bar none. He was in the Spurs. Uh, you know, when you're in the Spurs, your personality, your, your, your presence gets a little dimmed out because you're in a great system. But Manu deserves respect. Manu absolutely deserves respect, um, nod, and recognition. So shout out to Manu. Uh, retiring a champion, retiring a fucking winner, Manu Ginobili. And let's talk about the, if we're talking about winners, gotta talk about our Vegas Golden Knights. Vegas strong, Vegas Golden Knights, woo! Golden Knights players are slowly coming back to Vegas. Uh, that means preseason will soon be upon us. We actually saw a clip of Paul Stasny shooting a video and saying he will be back in a couple of weeks to Vegas. I'm very excited to see Paul Stasny, what he can do in that center uh, position, or center uh, center uh, uh, position. Yeah, that's right. My God. But I feel like he'll line up with Alex Tuck and probably air Alex Tuck and Tomas uh, Tatar. So that's going to be a fun lineup to watch and see. I can't wait. And when we talk about the NHL, man, oh my God, talks of Ottawa Senators, Eric Carlson traits are heating up. And mind you, they came out this week and said no Canadian teams. Uh, Eric Carlson's camp has no Canadian teams in mind to go to. So my thought is, so you're saying Vegas can be one of them. Because remember, boys and girls, Vegas did reach out to Eric Carlson during the trade, de uh, uh, trade deadline uh, last season. So Vegas... If we if we can sign whoo, if we can sign Eric Carlson to a fucking deal, oh boy oh boy I think we I think Vegas still has cap space and cap room to fiddle around, but honestly though you know if we're if we're gonna talk about Eric Carlson, you know I, I want to give Eric Carlson a shout out because this man, his situation in Ottawa has been a fucking mess. Yes, Eric Carlson's situation at Ottawa has been an absolute mess, and no one's helping him out. No one's helping the brother out. Okay. From being one goal away from the Stanley Cup Final, a Game 7 second overtime loss. Just imagine how fucking terrible that feels, okay? I can tell you how fucking terrible that feels. Overtime wins are amazing. Overtime losses are fucking terrible. But Game 7 loss. And to being injured throughout most of the season and holding terrible form throughout the season... To being allegedly cyber-bullied um, alongside his spouse by... a former teammate uh, about his stillborn child, which is fucked up, by the way, which is fucked up. It's been an awful year for Eric Carlson. It's been an awful year for Eric Carlson. And you know what? I really hope no matter which team he goes to, I always say Vegas because, you know, I'm a Vegas fan. I want him to come and, you know, just make our blue line the most terrifying thing in the NHL. Uh, I hope the best for Eric Carlson. I really hope he finds peace wherever he goes and wish him the best of luck. I mean, the, the situation... The last year has been awful for him. And I really hope he can find peace and um, wherever he goes, wherever he may land. And good God, it sucks. It sucks to see situations like that for uh, nice players. And Eric Carlson, man, he, he's, he's, he does a lot of charity work out there in Ottawa. Um, so, yeah, it's crazy to see nice guys like this go through this shit. So hopefully Eric Carlson, wish you the best of luck, brother. Man. It sucks. It sucks. But you know what? You know what doesn't suck? The fucking Dodgers. They don't suck right now. It's fucking awesome. Players weekend this weekend, uh, last weekend actually, and players were wearing their nicknames on their jersey, which was awesome. And that actually followed up with a back-to-back -back, uh, man of the match performance by fucking Justin Turner, man. The dude. The dude. Red Turner 2. Our dude. And here's the thing, because as a Dodgers fan, I'm still debating which jersey I want to buy. Uh, before the playoffs or during the playoffs. And I'm debating between Puig, Turner, and Kershaw, and possibly Bill Bellinger. But I'm really leaning towards Puig right now. I mean, I love my boy Puig. He's, he's a bit, he's a bit, but uh, I, I, you know, I need that passion. I love that uh, passion, man. That's what it's all about, baby. That's what it's all about. And remember, guys, all weekly writing is going to be provided on the link description below. 
on the little fucking shit here, so make sure you check that shit out. And weekly writing number 32, Drama, God's Architect. And I kind of took this title just on a whim, and to be honest, I wanted to work on dialogue more than story, which, which is what I fucking tell myself um, when I really procrastinated and wrote a couple of hours before the podcast, so... And just two assholes debating pretty much. And what is it based on? I don't know. Mostly internal monologuing and, you know, common threads. And it's more of a dramedy than anything else. And full of drama was a wee bit awkward for me to write this week. Couldn't really get the idea or preparation done. So I just figured, why the fuck not? Just let's do a dramedy. And weekly film number 32, guys. Foo Fight! Remember, kids, IMDb gave this movie a 1.8 out of 10. So, oh, how generous they were. They were really generous on that number. Let's talk about the plot of this fucking movie. The evil Brand X is trying to take over with the singular brand in a local grocery store. It is up to the heroes of grocery products to stop Brand X and save the day. Trust me, it's fucking stupider than it actually fucking sounds like. And the stereotypical hero's journey wrapped in a garbage story. After the garbage story, every aspect of this movie was fucking terrible, by the way. And honestly, at times, I, there, were, there are moments I have, I literally had no fucking idea what was going on. And because the film tries to shove so much fucking food jokes up your ass that you just don't know what the fucking plot is about. Every once in a while, you'll have that arbitrary, uh, arbitrary evil character just pop up and you're like, oh, that's, that's the evil character. Cool. That, that's... And I know, that's a bit excessive, but that seriously, watch this movie and trust me, you'll understand why the frustration comes in. And characters... Ikes, short for icons uh, for the grocery products, are voiced by some notable Hollywood actors. Charlie Sheen, Wayne Brady, Hilary Duff, Eva Longoria, Jerry Stiller, Chris Catan, Christopher Lloyd. Good God, seriously, at a first glance, you know, the build actors alone should be a massive turn on, but it's a fucking dumpster fire. All right, it's a fucking dumpster fire, and the level of overacting is absolutely incredible. Yes, blame the writers, yes, but come on. But enough about me, let's kill you. Why? Why? And yo, you want to talk about visuals? Oh God, what a disgusting piece of fucking mess. Imagine all the blooper reels of Shrek or other DreamWorks pictures back in the early 2000s. And oh, and, and before, you know, you ask me. Yes, they were a fucking nightmare, those goddamn blooper reels. And for, for that shit, for, for the bloopers to be better than the movie, I, I know what I'm saying. But trust me when I say that, it, it's absolutely insane, but the movie's fucking terrible. And do, how, how do every character look like they're spazzing out through the entire movie? Holy shit, I mean, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, I'm pretty sure the director and the producers were, were saying this is some cutting-edge shit of technology, but no, I, I don't believe that shit. I mean, I can go on and on about how fucking terrible this movie is, man. I really can. Uh, I'm pretty sure the executives were saying to fucking... Um, Good God, he was saying to goddamn Lawrence Kasanoff, the guy who fucking produced Mortal Kombat Annihilation, by the way, said, hey, you know what, Lawrence, put all the shitty music in the world, put all the shitty visuals in the world, and we're, we're still going to give you a fucking movie budget. And we're going to give you $65 million in budget to produce this movie in 2005 and never release it and never buy the rights back to this movie until 2012. Okay? So if I have to give this fucking movie a review, a .5 out of 10. Food Fight is a fucking train wreck in all aspects of what a film is and simply epitomizes Hollywood greed and ignorance and lack of foresight. Congratulations, Hollywood. You fucking done it again for throwing away 65 million fucking dollars. Jesus fucking Christ. Album of the week, guys. Uh, Ara by Azuna. I do not know the language. Four years of Spanish in high school. Thanks, American education system. Awesome, guys. I still do not know Spanish, but Latin music is awesome because the fucking sexiness of this fucking um, Ozuna and what he brings on the table, the sensuality of uh, his reggaeton specifically, I dig that shit. It, it goes hard. It does what it needs to do. And that's why when it came out as album of the week, I was like, you know what? I, I got to do this. I got to do this new release. Got to talk about some Latin music up in here because yes... We are cultural, we are worldly, we gotta see all the shit. So, we got that going on. And the thing with Ozuna, like we do here, not too hard, not too soft. A little bit of Motown Philly for you guys, uh, boys to men going on. 
Other shit going on. Uh, I working out, working in the garage gym. Figure I do that two, three times a week, and also trying out some intermittent fasting. It's been a fucking disaster in the last few days, so I'm trying to figure my fucking food shit out. So hopefully it will not be a, a piece of shit when we're eating. And next week on the Sky Lounge, guys, I need to still. I still have four days to figure out the big monthly adventure. And once I do that, I'm gonna fucking film that shit because time is running out. Like goddamn clock stoppers. <sighs> Anyways, guys, what an odd reference to what odd reference to end the fucking podcast. All right, folks, thank you so much for joining me this week. Make sure you are subscribed on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Music for a new episode every Tuesday. Make sure to follow me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and Facebook at the Sky Lounge. Stalk me on Snapchat at da13ig5ung. Now, fuck off. Oh my, that was good, that was good. And you know what I just realized? Uh, SoundCloud did not record any of that shit, so I'm gonna actually be doing a little bit of recording of post-work, post-mortem after this shit. Thanks, Tablet, thanks for being a piece of shit. And any of you guys that did swing by, thanks for joining along, thanks for coming in. Uh, I know this is just some fucking guy talking nonsense, but I appreciate you dropping by uh, at the Sky Lounge, good shit. All right, titties, shake it.